Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. My mission is to get to know the person behind the book. To accomplish this, I ask a series of quick questions. And today, my mission is very exciting because I have two guests, two people to get to know. I have award-winning writer, Andrea Curtis. Her latest book is City Streets Are For People and its brilliant illustrator is Emma Fitzgerald. Welcome to All About Canadian Books. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Oh, it, I'm so excited to get to know you a little better. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Andrea, we'll start with you. When did you realize you wanted to be a writer? Well, I think like many writers, I have always been a voracious reader and I discovered worlds there that enthralled me and made me want to create something that could transport me like the books that uh, I read had done. And I also think it's a lot about how you're encouraged as a kid. And uh, I think teachers told me I was good at it. And my grandmother was a writer. I actually wrote my first book about her life. Oh. Oh, that's fantastic. And what was that called? It's called Into the Blue, Family Secrets and the Search for a Great Lakes Shipwreck. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. And, and what about you, Emma? When did you know you wanted to be an illustrator? I think also really goes back to childhood where, you know, drawing was just what came naturally to me and I enjoyed it and I did it you know, that whole idea that practice, and I don't want to say practice makes perfect, because I think what people like about my drawings is I'm actually, I'm not concerned about them being entirely perfect. And I think that comes from maybe more from age 16 and onwards, like we moved, you know, I, I was born in Africa, I grew up in Canada, then we moved back to Ireland, where my parents were from when I was 16. So at that time, being a teenager in a new place and drawing, and taking the bus into Dublin and sketching a city, um, I learned how to draw very quickly and so I think because of this element of being on the move a lot and then in my 20s I traveled and lived in many different countries so yeah I, I think all of that comes through and you are your your experience and, and then that piece of it becoming books like that was a fantasy but it actually wasn't until I started drawing Halifax um, where I lived for many years that I came up with my first book hand-drawn Halifax so yeah it was a bit of a winding path. <laughs> <laughs> so for you, the illustration came first before the, the writing process then? Yeah. So when I did that book, I, yeah. you know, I do write the words, but I do the drawing first and then the words come through that process. Okay. Yeah. So I've yet to write first. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Okay. So Andrea, what prompted your interest in sustainability? Um, I guess, I mean, I've had a very long time interest in issues around equity, so especially poverty and gender. And I think I found my way to being engaged in sustainability through that. I, I mean, of course, our climate crisis is all encompassing. It's, uh, it's, and it's definitely affecting the most marginalized people the most. So um, it, my interest in sustainability grew out of those earlier interests but I guess it also goes back to my family as well we have a place that we go to in the summer and it's entirely off the grid it has uh -huh. solar it's run on solar we have composting toilets it's been fossil fuel free almost entirely since the 80s so I come by this engagement really honestly my my dad has is an early adopter um but I also think I, I mean I think my engagement in sustainability has grown also with my own children. I um, started a vegetable patch here at our house in Toronto, just a tiny little one, and, and then got involved in the school garden. And um, food, I think, is a huge gateway to, to, be, to caring about the environment, because of course, it all depends on the soil and the air. And, um, and so, yeah, it's like all these sort of deepening connections to understanding how important caring for the planet is. Yeah, yeah. And I love that you're off grid, by the way, at the cottage. That's fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> Emma, how would you describe your drawing style? 
think, yeah, I alluded a bit to this looseness. So there is this sort of quick um, aspect and I, I generally don't use a lot of pencil. It's sort of diving in with the pen. And a lot of people compare it to Quinton Blake because a lot of people can relate to those images from uh, the Roald Dahl books that he illustrated. Um, and I guess I would say I'm, I'm so like thrilled when people say that, it's such a big compliment. And then I think where I do some of my color digitally and I never set out to copy his style. I just think we have a similar whimsy and kind of maybe way of seeing the world. So yeah, it's a sort of whimsical, but also a lot of detail. And maybe that comes from my architecture background where, um, and just like I said, traveling a lot and noticing. So that act of seeing is very important to me. Mm -hmm. And Andrea, what has teaching children you teach children creative writing. What has it taught you? Well, I just, I love working with kids and I know Emma has, does that as well. Um, I, I ran a, a creative writing workshop out of the basement of type books here in Toronto on Queen Street through an organization called Wordplay. Mm -hmm. And um, I just loved getting these kids and many of them were not readers or even didn't think of themselves so much as creative, but, and just getting them engaged. And I would use movement and art and music and writing. And I, I think that it's all very much intertwined. And some kids have are able to access their creativity through their drawing more readily than words. and we would incorporate all that. And um, so I think that I learned that that is true for me as well. Yeah. Um, and it also really forced me to think about process because kids would ask really good questions about like mm -hmm. how a story is constructed. Um, but I also think it, it forced me and, and reminded me of something that uh, sometimes adults forget is how, um, how smart and amazing kids are and how um, they, they really, um, you know, are, uh, are also a very tough crowd. Like you, when you're writing, you, they, they ask, they require action and, and engagement and strong characters. And um, yeah, I just, um, they, they really reminded me that uh, to, that writing for kids is, is really, tough and important. <laughs> yeah. And do you test sections of your book out on the on your students? Yeah, I have definitely. Um, yeah, and they're a tough crowd. Like <laughs> more more action, you know, more, you know, more disasters. They loved uh in my experience to write about, you know, the worst case scenarios, tornadoes and hurricanes. And, you know, it's just, it's that kind of thing comes really naturally to kids. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, you were born in South Africa, which I'd love to go visit. Um, how has being born in South Africa influenced your work? Um, well, it's a funny one. Funny you say that because I was born in in South Africa, but we lived in Lesotho. So my, my passport actually says I was born in Lesotho because mm. it was during the time of apartheid. And my parents, wow. I couldn't, if I we wanted to go back to Ireland and I was a South African citizen, we couldn't travel if my hospital, the hospital was correct. So they actually got a fake birth certificate made for me. Oh. So I think it's right from that, that you kind of get a sense of how it's affected me. I think it really made me very aware of these issues and, and my own privilege in the world and my own mobility in the world because um yeah I, I you know was able to sort of sidestep this thing that would have kept us trapped there we were living there for two years uh my parents were working in the hospital so yeah I, I think it's just given me a, a window into not everyone has my experience and humanity and a lot of the issues that Andrea is talking about in terms of equity and and also a huge curiosity because I didn't remember it so then I went back in my 20s, um, worked in Johannesburg and did art in Lesotho. Um, so yeah, it, it sort of guided my adult life as well as my younger formative years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Andrea, what inspires you? Well, it, it's actually funny that uh, earlier Emma said noticing 
Mm -hmm. um, I, I actually think that that probably is my greatest inspiration. I am a very curious person and also a noticer. Um, I am especially inspired by nature um, as probably obvious from the, the books I've been working on recently and actually all of my work. Um, but I also think it, it goes back to what we were talking about, about the creative writing workshop uh, with writing for kids. I'm so inspired by the idea that kids can really make a difference in the world. And um, as I said earlier, I think we underestimate children. And I think it's our job really to encourage them to see themselves as active agents and uh, that they have the power and intelligence and ability to, to really um, make change in the world. And um, I, that's very inspiring to me. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And what about you, Emma? What inspires you? Well, uh, to not just cycle off of that, but yeah, I think <laughs> the, the, the noticing and, and I think there was a quote when I was um, young that Mary Engelbert had uh, illustrated and it would have been a, you know, a card that I would have seen a lot when I was a child. And it was a um, quote, um, the true voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes, Marcel Proust. And of course, I love travel, but I think it's those new eyes that we, one can access anytime. Like I was teaching some sketching to some women this morning and we went out basically to a parking lot and someone found a dandelion, you know, leaf coming out of the crack and sketched that. And it's gorgeous. And just to spend that time noticing it and appreciating it and celebrating it. And yeah, it's just those, those little things that you might not always notice, but you make time for that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you look at the illustrations in the book that we just made, <laughs> noticing is very much a part of it. Every time I look at the book, it feels like I see something new. So, <laughs> and, and there's a lot of people noticing other people, I think, especially on the cover. I think, um, if I grab it here. Oh, yay. Perfect. We have, you know, someone looking at the croissants, but someone looking at the person looking at the croissants. So. <laughs> And, and I think we all engage in that act of, of noticing, whether we sort of name it or think of it consciously, but, you know, it's just, it's just part of our human experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, I love it. So thank you so much, Andrea Curtis and Emma Fitzgerald. I feel like we've got to know you both a little better. So thank you for being guests on All About Canadian Books. Thank you. Oh, pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Up next... Andrea and Emma will discuss how City Streets Are For People came together. I'll put links down below in the description book, description books, help, description box, so you can visit Andrea's website, Emma's website, and also Groundwood Books website. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, check out my other interviews, and come back to watch All About Canadian Books. Thank you.